Hey YouTube, Strictly Broken here, doing finally another Strictly Locals for you guys today, and today I got a recurring special guest, please introduce yourself, good sir. Uh, how's it going guys, Peshcats here, on the Strictly Broken channel, doing another Strictly Locals cast with the Yue Peng himself, and uh, today we're looking at uh, Rewrite. The uh, triple K build, and uh, that that's on the left, and then on the right we have uh, Vivid Strike, and I believe you said it was eight gold bar. Yes, this uh, I guess the meta quote unquote deck. Okay, it's a it's a eight it's an eight gold bar fighter build though, right? Not yeah. a not a Kaiser Arts build. So, no. uh, yeah, leading Just get right into it. Leading with runner, a very typical play. I don't how how popular is runner actually. Do you know? I think it's pretty popular. There aren't very many good level zero beaters that Vivid Strike runs. So, runner's probably good. Immediately triggers gold bar, uses brainstorm effect, and then clocks a gold bar. So, definitely out at least a couple already. Rewrite's going to play a bigger runner. <laughs> and these runners are just going to run all over the place. Wait, 15 versus 1k, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Sugoi. Oh, more runners. Everyone, runners everywhere. Uh, it's like typical at this point to go like runner and then you see the opponent going runner because everyone's playing runners, right? And like, uh, are, are beaters popular in the States right now? I actually don't know. Um, It's probably just dependent on the player. Yeah. And like the deck. Uh. Some some players will just run whatever they feel is better. <clears throat> I also feel that like how easily the deck can like employ certain strategies can also change the preference of uh, runner versus like a beater. Because uh, like you look at the vivid strike runner and it's like one k power, so like it's very easy to try field against that card. So decks that like would want to try field early they can just like play beater and know that the the runner won't be able to run it over and then they can just try field against it the following turn oh that's unfortunate feels bad man so rewrites out three climaxes now at least didn't quite catch what he searched but i think it might have been the one zero event bonder it's uh it's like it's that card glared in the top left i think it yeah, it was. Yeah, the the pseudo Azusa. Pseudo. Fikoff Azusa. <coughs> what do you think of this? Like, you don't see a lot. Because everyone's playing Guardian, right? What do you think of the Triple K build, actually? Because. Uh, I think it's. I think it's pretty good. I think it also depends on, like. Uh, like. People play Guardian in different ways, but. Uh, I don't think the Triple K deck has like a lot of different ways that you could really play the deck. The most central strategy is probably just to like use the the coffee event and just like uh, make sure your deck state is in a favorable position. It does kind of similar things as what the old Guardian list used to do when they ran the the uh, pants climax, except with. Uh, Less oh, he, stock, obviously. Oh, he got it. He got oh, he got it. it. <laughs> he got it. What a sack boozle. Also, did you see that he didn't mill four off the first Kvikov event? Don't, do you think that's like... So going first refresh, you have these mill cards. You see some people choose not to mill four. Generally, I've subscribed to always mill four. What do you think of that? I, I think it depends on what your current deck state is. Uh, Like right now, he's out like four what four climaxes or he was out he was out three when he used when, the first feedback. when he used it so i think he's in a reasonable position to just uh grab whatever he needs and then just like leave the deck in whatever position it was before you think you think you think so yeah i think that's fine mm. so vivid strike just took everything right yeah or did uh, he's still not too behind so it's fine. Um, <coughs> oh, SP. 
So I'm going to play the Ironheart first and then use the Brainstorm. That way, if he hits on the Brainstorm, he can give Power Boost. Looks like he hit one. Probably going to search another copy of Ironheart. Oops. Yep. Gold bar for sure. I guess he triggered gold bar last turn, so we already know for sure that he has the bar. Didn't he pitch it? He Did he pitch it? He triggered bar first and swapped something in. I don't know if he pitched it, though. I wasn't totally paying attention, but I, I, I would assume by him like grabbing the Einhart out of the deck that he would have the climax combo and uh i feel like in this matchup he would want to search for the 2-1 anti-change punch but it's also in his clock so unless he's running more than one copy then he's not gonna be able to do that all right so he's not searching for the 1-0 Einhart combo after all and instead he's going for a runner maybe he doesn't have combo then Possibly. This might also be indicative that he just wants to mill out his deck. So he mills two, doesn't hit any climaxes. Uh, so decides, on, decides to only go for double double Einhart. Maybe it's because he has a lot of cards in his hand, and if he went triple Einhart, then uh, he would go over on hand size, so he figured he would just mill out his deck. Yeah, he gets additional one extra <clears throat> card milled out. Because I guess the Einhart, if he gets the reverse, you get one card from the search right so he's getting an additional card with the runner which is not that bad not that bad it's weird that he oh, okay okay i think maybe he might have multiple copies of the gold bar in his hand so he's searching for another turn of combo on the following turn oh eats it all oh no he canceled one he canceled one. yeah he canceled with the shot so uh if i've been paying attention correctly the Rewrite players out three shots, so it's fairly likely that they're not going to be getting their level one combo. And from this position, he probably just wants to try to compress his deck as much as possible. He definitely wants to refresh before hitting level two, which will be very easy to do for this deck, obviously. And he wants to just set up his Kotori combos for when he hits uh, when he hits level two post refresh. I don't think he's clocked yet, so he has the choice to either clock or use the Takitsubo effect. Uh, he's not obviously he's not going to want to use both because that would put him at level two. In this context, I don't see like so you know how like Katori. If you want to do like the dream double Katori back row play, you need it's like five stock heavy. If you can either huh. have the choice of doing either, I would just like probably clock. Did he clock? Yeah, I, I find it interesting that he clocked the level three. <laughs> Spicy, especially so he's gonna. Pitch a pants, grab... Okay, so... Uh, based on him clocking the Kotori and then also ditching the pants combo, or the pants climax for its combo, uh, it really just shows that he wants to just mill out his deck and not worry too much about the, uh, the early play. You see, he went for exactly three cards here and left four in his deck afterwards, so this implies that he's not going to be using another coffee event this turn. He's just going to play two more characters and then go to attack. It also implies he's out. But, uh... Oh, or he's going to brainstorm. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Let's see, he hit, he hit one, and I believe he went back with six. That's so... I don't know how I feel about this play, actually. I actually think this is a bit of a strange line of play. I would I if I were on the uh, if I were on the side of the rewrite player I would have immediately started prepping for level two so like I would have kept the Kotori, I would have kept one of the pants climaxes and it's also important to recognize that your opponent has their anti change counter in the clock and it's fairly uncommon for vivid strike players to run more than one copy of that counter especially when you can see he's uh, the vivid strike player is also fitting Scuderia in his deck so he's a bit pressed on space for additional counters. Yeah, I don't know how... And, like, you know, we were talking about a little bit earlier how, like, the guy had the choice to mill four. He milled two. If he... he was, It looked like by this turn he was trying to go through his deck. He basically used an extra card to accomplish what he could have done last turn. You know what I mean by that? In the end, like, he actually could have just conserved <coughs> one of his resources if he just milled two more. I think it was sense. fine. I think it was fine that he didn't mill two more. Like, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate that he ended up only canceling one of the three attacks on the opponent's turn. But I don't think that milling only or going only two in with the coffee event was necessarily a an incorrect play. Oh, cancel off refresh. The, the thing is like the I play KKK and I feel like 
you just want to get past the first refresh pretty quickly, right? It doesn't matter if you don't cancel. Like, you're not actually looking to cancel. It's actually better if you don't cancel, but get to something like 1-6, if you know what I mean. It's just the faster you get to that position and are able to refresh into playing Katoris, you, the faster you can actually do what your deck wants to do. You know what I mean? And I just think first refresh, uh, if you play the deck a little bit more, you just don't want to be milling two because you just want to get through the deck, right? In fact, if you can, like, chain three coffee events, it's, like, really good. Nice. Yeah, I think I think what he did was okay because he still has two additional copies of the event in his hand that he still hasn't used. So, like, he, he definitely had the capacity to, like, mill through the deck a lot more. But at the same time, I think it's a uh, lower risk at level one if he milled less considering he still had so many climaxes in his deck. Three, four. He had two pants in hand. One pants in hand, so three. Yeah, I guess. That's fine. I mean... I mean... I think we can also assume that he just drew those pants like right at the very end because uh, otherwise, I think he could have just played one the turn before. But he decided not to. Yeah, he just decided to just go for small weenie swings. Anyways, uh, I, did the Viva Strike double cancel? No, single cancel. Last turn is 2-2 two, two now. Uh, he took one and then canceled and then the shot trigger, or refresh damage and then shot trigger. <laughs> and then he took the, the last attack. So now we're seeing the Fuka early play come out. And yeah, as predicted, he had another copy of the Climax in his hand, so he could once again do the combo. KKK actually has a stock suicider for early <coughs> killers. That would have been saucy if he plays that card. I didn't see it in his waiting room, though. It's definitely a good card. Grabs another Einhardt, clocks a runner. I... Fronting for three. Oh my gosh. Look All right, this guy's just eating the damage. I don't, I don't, that doesn't get clocked suicide, I think. Oh, it was tying. Okay. Oh, he used the, he used the buff on the middle. Okay. I'm pretty sure the rewrite player is still only out two climaxes, so he could have played Kotori early play if he had it in his hand, but he clocked it the turn before. It's uh, it's risky for him to use coffee events to try to dig for copies of it, because then like you could potentially mill climaxes. So this is this is a really awkward spot for the rewrite player. He's gonna clock to level three. He doesn't really have any good plays left in his deck at all, because if he Kotor if he draws Kotoris, then he can't heal, and then you just saw three of the like Misakuro effect Kagari get put into his clock. Yeah. So yeah, he took three consecutively as damage. That was pretty spicy. Uh, whips the brainstorm too. This guy's getting boozled really hard right now. I think probably the best play here would be to use the coffee events to just mill out the rest of the deck, because you can't be sure where like the climaxes are going to be or not. And then uh, once he refreshes, he can play his Kotori. Hopefully, he also has a copy of the what's it called. The pants climax, Kagari, like at least one, right? Um, just to grab, like I like, I like, I play the deck, right? And I like having like Kagari as an option to grab more pants after you chain into one pants. But I don't think he's able to get one at all. I'm pretty sure they're just all in his yeah, waiting room yeah. already. He's gonna go for another coffee event. He has like three coffees in his head. <laughs> so like the strength of the triple K rewrite deck, obviously, is it's like it's able to control the state of its deck very easily yeah definitely gonna pay out that shot climax uh before oh, he decides to play the last coffee and he go through the rest of his deck oh my god he had three climaxes on the bottom feels bad uh... yeah so they have a they have a lot of control over the state of their deck but um obviously when you're when you're playing a deck that likes to mill through deck cycles a lot you're taking risks with like you have a newly refreshed deck, you have uh you have, if even if you have like all eight climaxes back in the deck, there's still potential to like eat a bunch of damage and uh there's a a lot of margin for you to just get a, a little bit of bad luck with like the order of the cards in your deck. I mean, in in theory, the early play is supposed to help with that. Say you get unlucky, you a get animated by your mills, you're still supposed to not take that much damage. And that's the strength of where that card comes in, right? I just think the fact that he skipped being able to use it at two was just super unfortunate for him. 
and still getting unlucky. <laughs> oh boy. Not even able to get over the Fuka, so this is gonna be a, uh, or not 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 like get over, but I mean like if he had the stock suicider, then like obviously he would be able to deal with it. But with the way his opponent's field is set up right now, with the uh, Einhardt in the back row, like he really has no option but to like throw a weenie at it. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. All right, so he's out three climaxes. It's pretty anime. Um, I I sometimes I honestly think like. So dropping one copy of Katori often feels very below average for me, if you know what I mean. These minus two soul cards in general, like having just one almost feels like it doesn't feel that good. I, I always want two minimum, if you know what I mean. Like Kuro. I think I think having one copy is fine in this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think having one copy is fine in this in like the scenario where you have the two one back row. I mean, like. Triple K isn't really a deck where you're going to be building like a whole bunch of stock anyway. So uh, you're kind of you're kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket if you go like double Katori plus two one back row in a single turn. It's hard for them to die, though. Like <laughs> It's it's so hard. They're they're what? They're like 12, five, maybe 12, five minimum. Uh, any counter makes them like 15, five. It's pretty big. I can see them living. It's a lot of investment, though. It is. If they don't live, you obviously you feel bad. But what can you do? This guy's popping off still. So brainstorms hits one. Oh dang! He has the double burn play. Yeah, I think it's reasonable for him to go for a finisher play here. He has just enough stock to do it. His opponent's out three climaxes, and he could go for three burns here. Oh, Definitely the correct play. Playing over the Vivio instead of playing over the Rene, you you want to have the Scuderia target on your field the double, for the following turn. The double Scuderia target. The yeah, potentially potentially double Scuderia target because you can use the effect to bring out the one zero Rene when you send the filter to the waiting room, and then you have potentially double Scuderia targets. There's also uh that's also a very good play in the Persona Five matchup. You can use it to play around. Uh, Joker to play around Joker, Joker level three. This guy's probably dead, Boozle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I honestly think this guy's probably dead. Front and center, look at top, get a marker, pay two, burn two. So this is going to be for one. If he triggers, this is potential lethal, but it's not. All right, now you, you side on the top. He has to cancel a one and a two. So you're going to check top, pay two. Is he siding? He he better be siding. It, okay, we, we, will, we don't know. We, we will not never know. We will never know if he's actually siding. Because the just correct died. the correct play is obviously to side attack there. He did have the oh, double scoot area, so he could go for the. <laughs> the and he had the oh one right, god, this guy's just BMing. Literally just had the nuts. So, um, I feel like this honestly, this game didn't so much highlight. Uh, what, I mean, like it sort of did highlight what rewrite Triple K is capable of in terms of like deck control but um just the circumstances didn't... the circumstances just weren't in his favor yeah. for him to uh get like a good outcome out of uh the control he had over his deck vivid strike and uh, vivid strike just had the nuts so uh do you have any any other comments you'd like to make on this mr mr ping uh, thank you pesh cats kun uh my only Okay, so let, let's actually talk about this milling thing. Let's get this solved because, okay, my I guess my, my question is why do you think it's actually okay to mill two on the first deck? Like, I'm very interested in this because okay, how, I'll lead off by saying like something like this. So he had four climaxes left in deck. Four. He had one in hand. I saw one pants in hand. He had... Let's say approximately 25 cards in deck. 25 is reason. He was like halfway through his deck. If he doesn't mill four, like, what's what's four and like, four climaxes in 25 is like one and six point what? One and six point two five. Wait, four and four and twenty? Four and twenty-five. He was around four and twenty-five. Oh, and twenty-five. So that's like one climax in every six point two five cards, right? Something arbitrary like that. He might not even have 25. Just, like, if you guys want to go back, you can see the exact number. Uh, but he. Him not choosing to mill for is not. There was no 
actual reason for him not to mill forward is where I'm coming at. Like, I can understand it's fine, but do you agree or disagree that he had no incentive to actually not mill four? I think the reason that you wouldn't mill four is... So, like, obviously I play a lot of CG, right? Like, I play I play Minamis a lot. I play Komei's. I play Rin Akoski's. And so, uh, the way that I like to play those effects, effects like that, is um, the safest... The safest route to milling through into your first refresh is you want to mill all the way down to like one card. So if you don't have the ability to do that, then I think it's unsafe to go four in. I, I'm, I'm like I'm the type of player where, uh, like if I'm at like one four, right? Yeah. Like, obviously, if you could mill to a state where like you leave three cards in deck and it's all clean then like you're not going to refresh with those cards but at the same time you're taking this much more free damage. So I would rather set myself up in a scenario where instead of like me being three free cards and three cards in deck total, I would rather be at a state where I'm like two climaxes in like seven or eight cards. Like I would I would consider that a more favorable position for myself. And so uh, like if I can set myself up in a position where I have potential to cancel, like obviously like one and eight or something, something like really awful like that, obviously, yeah, then you're going to want to mill all the rest out. But if I can, uh, set myself up in a position where, so like at that point in the game, he was, he was like what, five and five and 20 something, right? He was four. He had one pants in hand. I remember that he actually did. So. Was it? Okay. All right. So uh, if like if I'm in that position, then having the flexibility to choose how many cards you want to go through, like as you're going through it, uh, the the ratio of like climax to non climax in your deck is like constantly changing, and I I think that like some some other people will like argue otherwise. Like I know I know like you or Christian would argue you want to just like mill through the first deck as quickly as possible. But I think that uh, if if as you're playing these like flexible abilities that you can turn your deck state into something that is more favorable to you. So like if you can turn your deck into like a deck state where it looks like it's like second deck rotation, like where with where you like have decent compression, then I feel that that's an okay play to make. If that makes sense. I I get where you're coming from. Uh, and citing christian specifically he used to think he used to think the same way as you uh like he has to, had the same philosophy as you if he was able to make it uh, like a good deck state on first refresh as if it were in second refresh why not do that he asked he asked and um the what it comes down to is you actually can't control your triggers though that's the big thing like so, uh, in a lot of cases your triggers will be nice they will be quite nice for you but because you actually can't contri control what you trigger when you said I want to have a little bit more control over my deck being uh, or looking d decent. A lot of times you won't trigger, but a lot of times you'll also double trigger and then you're screwed because you didn't mill more. You know what I mean? So rather than kind of the reason you mill out a lot is because you just want to mill into a position where when you trigger, there's like a 0% chance you can cuck boozle yourself. And then because he had three coffees in hand, he could have literally gone down enough to where he was guaranteed to refresh with full clock. And then just start a new deck. I, that's the line I would have taken. But I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. I don't. Your line gets rewarded a lot of the times. But like in his case, like you know, like I, I, double triggers or something. Like in the end game, you're just screwed, right? I also think there's there's uh there's a very at the same time though there's a very big difference between the 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 order of actions in the triple K deck like triggering versus milling. Uh, versus what I normally play, which is, like I said, uh, like Minamis and Cinderella Girls. Because with Minami, you have the ability to flexibly alter your milling based on your triggers on the fly because it's milling in the middle of the attack phase. Mm. Whereas with a deck like this, you don't have as much time to react. So, um, like, you could take another example, like Yuki. Yuki in Sword Art Online, you have the ability to make flexible plays based on your triggers. I mean, like Minami, you also have the ability to make flexible milling based on your triggers. So like, if you trigger clean, then 
you could not go in as many cards. And then, like, if third third attack, you, like, do trigger Climax, and, like, that was your last Climax, then you could just, like, mill, mill out everything. So I think flexibility has a lot to do with it as well. I, I like, actually, I like how you worded it, actually. A, a lot of effects that happen in the battle phase have this additional flexibility of being able to choose whether or not to use it based on what is happening in the battle phase. Like, a phase that really has very little action and waste right so like it's really good to have these type of effects uh, i like how you worded that actually that was nice i liked it um okay that aside uh, do i have any anything else anything else i want to weigh in do you think that kkk uh is being overshadowed by what guardian is in the metagame or do you think the deck's just not very good because we don't see a lot of kkk in japan lists on twitter or in tournament results here we don't see a lot of it. <coughs> now pretend guardian doesn't exist would people think kkk is a good deck is it being overshadowed? Um, honestly, I don't think that people would think of the Triple K deck as a a, oh. a very strong deck. It has it has My a apologies. high Triple K, yeah, Triple K, yeah, triple... <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. UA yesterday, yesterday, he was like, okay, maybe we shouldn't call it call it that in the video, and then he proceeds to just call it that like three times. It's cool. It's okay, cool. <laughs> so so, anyways, as I was saying, um, the reason that I don't think the deck would be seen as super strong uh so you look at the deck it has a high a high amount of deck manipulation like you have your brainstorm you have this one zero event you have a bonder to that event so you have a lot of control over the deck but apart from that the actual like utility in the set or in that deck that is offered it's Honest, it's very simple, but it's also like quite expensive. Specifically, like three two Kotori. Like the reason that Guardian ran it at first. Obviously, it's like a very strong effect, but it's also very exp expensive investment. And uh, if you compare, uh, if you compare Guardian to, if you play, if you compare Guardian running Kotori to Triple K running Kotori, uh, you see a very big difference between the two decks is. Um, the way they control their deck state as well as um, the resource management that the two decks have. So uh, Guardian has access to the stock building combo on Shizuru. It has access to uh, it, has, it, has, it has access to gold bar, which allows you to hopefully build uh, build clean stock as opposed to uh, as opposed to dirty stock. Obviously, in this scenario, I probably shouldn't be citing Gold Bar though, because uh, that previous build ran the Pants Trigger for the combo. Uh, I'm, I, I'm assuming we're referring to like that sort of build. Um, but anyways, so the the Guardian deck they have the one zero Shizuru combo, which affects both the resources of the Guardian deck as well as the way that they manage their deck state. Instead of going going through the deck multiple times with the event, uh, that deck prefers to just compress and just build stock and then hopefully cancel. Mm. Um, with the Triple K deck, you're going through your deck a lot. You're taking more refresh damage. You have a wider range of potential damage that you can be taking simply because you're, you're, you're keeping the number of climaxes in your deck as high as possible every time you refresh, but at the same time, uh, you can't maximize... Uh, or you can't optimize the number of non-climaxes that are going back as well because the the deck is operating very fast-paced and uh, you don't have a whole lot of time to uh, like settle into a safer game state. Mm -hmm. Like we saw in that game, like he went into he went into like level two, level three with like five stock. Like that's not something that you would see in if it was a guardian deck. The guardian deck would be able to in an ideal situation have like seven, eight, nine stock going into that state of that same state of game. Mm, mm. With with their with their respective combos and whatever their ability to track with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. all right. That sounds good. Um Triple K, just remember guys, triple K. I am I love I love everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but most of all, he loves anime. <laughs> and, with that thought, I guess uh, 
uh, let's wrap up. That. I guess I'm wrapping up the video. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pesh Cats, for coming on Strictly Locals again. Always no a problem. pleasure to have you. And yeah, uh, check out his channel, guys. His channel's bigger than mine, but there's no reason that you're not checking it out. Uh, he uploads a lot of types of content. I've, I've heard that you're coming out with this new series. Are you already released a, where you talk about like specific effects, right? And just kind oh, of the, the, the Pesh cast. Yeah, the Pesh cast. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice we're working on we're working on getting the schedule together for episode two. And uh, episode two will be about uh, AOT and its impact on deck building outside of AOT. Mm, so that's interesting. Guys, I will look definitely forward to that. watch that. I will definitely watch that. But yeah, great channel. Great guy. He also loves anime a little bit of the idol side, though, but <laughs> I love idols. He loves idols. I love my idols. Right. I love Shinon. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you once again for coming on the show. And uh, I'll see you guys next week on Strictly Locals. Bye.